Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last End Gamers, and welcome. And I'm excited to be back from a little bit of a break to have a look at some more fantastic creations, run some amazing community events, and continue enjoying my gaming experience. Here in front of us is a beautiful ship, a ship that will blow your socks completely off. It is the Immensity Carrier, Immensity, Im Immensity, Immensity Carrier from Allied Armor and it is beautiful. You can store tons of fighters for exact details. Check the link in the description and also check out some of Allied Armor's other creations as well because they don't disappoint. They continue to build craft after craft that is sculpted with skill and experience. So let's have a look. We're gonna start with the exterior of this. Well, it feels like a station, but it is a ship, I, I do confirm that. So we've got these really cool sort of communication style pods out on the side here. So you can see these have been created with various different pillars. You've got these white gray sort of antennas as well, some flat blocks with some painting just to kind of give you the idea that there is multiple sensors, multiple arrays going on in this area. And we do have two SeaWiz style turrets on here. So these are custom turrets and you've got their little Gatling guns in there. Using both new and old Gatling guns as a combination looks really damn cool. And they've got a camera up at the top there. So these will automatically lock and track onto targets just like normal turrets. Now as we work our way along the ship, you'll notice that there's a lot of angles going on here. And this is because there is absolutely a crazy amount of subgrids. Clang would be proud of this creation. So you can see inside here, how the armor has been tilted to create this really nice sloping curve that goes across it. Now on this platform, you can see we've got the UN, the United Never Never Nevertis? Navities? Navities? Navities. Why have I never seen that words put like that? Hmm. Something 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 with my mind doesn't feel to process that word. What's going on? So it could be a bit further on there as Aaron just struggles with English. We're having a look at this section here. So this is really beautiful as well. You can see the, the blue, they've got these various little markings coming up along here. And we've got the Armadillo Industries sign writing there with two little logos here. I'm not sure, too sure if these are logos or arrows, but they're both pointing in this direction. So a central sort of loading area. And they've got some hazard sort of stripes there. Now coming down the middle, we do have some more armament. We've got the artillery turrets as well as some more Sea Wiz style design turrets here as well. Now as we come into the central ring, there's a lot going on here. And when I say a lot, there's a lot of subgrids all connected up together. So you can see each one of these sections is a subgrid and they're all hinged together. So this is crying out for Clang to get involved here in this whole thing to snap apart. But you can see there's a catwalk actually connecting this inner area and it just looks stunning. The use of colour, the use of the details and the industrial sort of reinforcements running through it just create a whole element within this area. Now coming up on this ring you'll notice we've got these engine at bay cells. These engine bay cells are just another nice slope within a slope to create more slopes. We've got hinges, there must be plenty of hinges going on throughout this design. But you can see how that actually curves around the ring. And each element of this ring has more of these little communication devices on it as well. Very, very cool. There's two observation areas up here, but these are just kind of like mock observation areas. Because if we go inside here, you'll notice it's just like a whole little area. But from outside, it gives the idea that this ring could be fully functional. And you could walk through it if you wanted to. So coming down the ring, there's a little communications area here. So almost like a little bridge, an area where you could control the various goings from this carrier right there. Storage going around the side in these bright yellowy orange car containers. I like the idea of that. I like the idea of having a strong contrast color. And for this particular one, it's like this orangey yellow that they've got. So then we've got this central ring connector. And we'll go inside a bit more as we go and do the interior part. But you can see that these all lead to this interior area. Now continuing to work down the side of the ship, you can see that we've got lighting highlighting the tip and creating a bit of shadow and a bit of contrast if I turn my light out there as well. And then back to the other end where we've got more communication devices. Now to give you an idea of how big this area is well in the middle, I'll just put my character there. So you could fit a full size large ship in here. The red ship would probably fit three or four times, but it is designed to dock two, I believe, of 
Allied armor's larger sort of ships. You can see these various docking ports throughout this segment or up to or over about 40 of their smaller fighters in here. 40 smaller AI control carrier fighters launching from each of these hangars. Now wouldn't that be a spectacular thing? If I've got the time, maybe I could wire some up for another video, but there's a lot, a lot of programming to get them to launch successfully from each of these bays. And I really like this highlighted tip that goes around each of the hangars. It almost looks like there's some sort of force field, very Star Wars-esque, protecting each of these entrance ways. As we come along a little bit further, you can see that we've got more entrances to the various cargo bays, or hangar bays, you could say. I believe there is. Let's just make a quick count. So there is two on either end, so two entrance ways that connects one larger hangar on this side so a total of four well well two large hangars on either end so we've got four in total very nice indeed and then we've got a central connection through here as well and i think this is where we should start having a little bit of a look at the interior now the interior of this ship is quite a sprawl and with any large ship it's hard to navigate but you can see that a lot of these newer interior panels or i say newer but they're, they're not that new anymore that lead out to the further extents of the craft and more docking areas so this is like an outer docking area i'm guessing for an even larger ship if you wanted to connect that out to so it's been designed with the idea that you could connect i wouldn't say every ship of allied arms but you could connect quite a few of the collection up to this craft and been able to dock and maneuver them around so let's dive back into the hangar bay and we'll have a look at some of the other areas inside so we have ourselves a storage area over to this end of the hangar. It's just a small little compact area, but this would actually be quite useful if you were building in here, something you could run up to, quickly hit F or whatnot, or you could even grab things out of the connectors if you were deciding to build in, in each of these hangars. You see it's got these little raised up areas, but I think the idea is you'd produce everything, load this thing up, and then send it into battle. But very, very cool indeed. So as we continue through here, we actually have an airlock mechanism. So I'm going to bring my character over here. We'll have to just get ourselves into the other camera. So as I bring my character through this area, we're now into the airlock. Open the airlock up, and we continue in this little admin desk over on that side. And we've got walkways that take us into these various areas. This is like a living quarters, maybe a good spot for fighter pilots to quickly launch from. The staircase takes us up into this other area. And we have got some more sort of refineries, production areas. For a large ship, everything is, is in arm's reach of the hangars and something that I really like. We've got some of these fun little blocks here as well. Let's continue around. The camera is currently a little zoomed in. I am aware of that. But look how spectacular that looks. What's that overlooking? Oh, that's overlooking the airlock. So you've got like a an airlock security patrol there. And this continues walking through our matrix of hangars. We've got button panels. These lead out to the extents like we saw before. We'll continue jogging through. We'll pop some doors on the way. So a little server room or maybe a, a service room in here as well with some admin computers and whatnot. Coming up into this area, we've got some more batteries. We've got a lower deck here with more refineries. So a lot of duplicate, well, I wouldn't say duplicate areas, but areas that kind of repeat themselves throughout the ship. That's going to happen with, with any sort of design, more sort of crew areas. We'll bring ourselves back up to the main corridor here. See if we continue on to some of the bridge areas. Nice little overlook area like this with the refinery and the catwalk looking over into that area as we come up here a little crew lounge everything one could need and some luxury beds with wood and then a view of the hangar bay and a little sort of hangar command center area through here as well i'll show you what this looks like so we've got some server rooms on the side you could have a maybe a plan of your attack and you could watch the fighters launch from these hangars wouldn't that be spectacular just such a beautifully designed ship each area feels crafted like some of these ships on the workshop they don't feel like the player made they feel like you know they belong in a sci-fi universe of their own so now that we've looked around the interior and the exterior let's take this for a spin now firstly i have converted this from a station it was a station in the tour for performance and now we're going to attempt to give it a bit of a drive now acceleration as you can see in the bottom left is extremely slow and of course it's going to be with a ship of this size and let's have a look at the info tab as well yeah a ship of this weight as well 
this is a very, very heavy big ship. So acceleration and deacceleration. Look, just look how slow it is to deaccelerate as well. So if you got this up to top speed, you'd it'd be like driving um, a bit like a container ship or an oil tanker. You'd have to stop miles, maybe even kilometers ahead of your target. Let's have a look at how well it moves. We'll try and move it towards the asteroid you can see on the right. So it is moving with the gyroscopes, but a, a big issue with ships with loads of subgrids is you need a lot of gyroscopic power to get things moving. We can. We can try and move it over there, but once again, we are like a massive aircraft carrier or oil tanker. We are not going to be turning at any rate. Each one of your moves is going to have to be planned. I think what might even be better, since it takes so much mouse movement to get a slight movement at all, is maybe have AI set up with this one so that it can navigate to the waypoints itself so you can be down doing stuff in the hangars where it takes all this time to navigate and maneuver. But saying that, AI would probably struggle because of all the subgrids. This is a very cool, a very beautiful ship, but definitely one that is more leaning towards the station, I would say. If you were going to use this, um, you'd be crazy, number one, but also it's definitely a station, but you can't get away from just how beautiful, how much of a, a crafted ship this is.